Hey guys, it's Ed again. Uh, we're going to do a little work on the XR again today. I think we're going to try to do the electrical system. So um, uh, let's see how that goes. Hopefully it uh, goes better than some of the other projects. The um, carburetor boots on its way, so that should be here pretty soon. And um, you know, then we'll work on the carburation again. So stay tuned. So anyway guys, what we're going to do here is we're going to take the um, fuel tank off, the seat off, get down to where the coil bolts on, and from there we should be able to uh, get into uh, maybe giving some, some of this old girl some fire in the hole, we hope. So let's get to it. The seat is held on with the two bolts in the back here that hold the springs on, so you got to pull those off. Now we should be able to slide this back. I think it was stuck on some tape to get the seat off. I think I'm going to slip the uh, springs back on because she looks a little, little dopey this way. Well, maybe I won't. They seem to be kind of tight. I guess I didn't need to take them all the way off to slide the seat off. Let's see if we can squeeze that up there. Maybe I'll use the thing. Okay, I'm going to have to block you guys. Huh. Well, I guess I did it now. I can't get it back up there. So, I wonder if I hook it. That's going to pull it backwards. That's not going to work. Hmm. Well, anyway, we'll figure it out later. We should be able to pull this back. Get this tank up off here. Okay, now we're down to the coil mount, it's right here, and uh, I believe I purchased, let me come over here and look, in the box we have a brand new coil and brand new set of points and condenser, so that should help. Anyway, so I believe this should fit. I think it would go on there that way, wouldn't you? Maybe not. Actually, it'll go that way. And of course, the bolt holes don't quite line up. Let's see if we have the original coil. I don't think I do. I think. Yeah, this is the coil off the XL. That's not going to work. So, I guess we're going to make do with this one. Um, the holes are a little bit off. You guys can see. We're looking at, you know, some misalignment here. So, but I'm believing it's got to go this way, otherwise it won't clear the tank. So let me just try slipping the tank back on it and making sure it's going to clear before we go too far. So. It's got to go this way, I would think. Find the 
little rubber doodinkies here. Somewhere. Where is it? Right there they are. That one's lined up. Okay. So I'm going to pull this back, slide it over the top. I believe that'll clear. So it looks like we're going to be okay with the coil the way it is. We're just going to have to either drill some new holes or make a couple new tabs to hold that on there. So I'm good with that. Get that out of here. Yeah, that'll work. Good, good, good. So uh, what should we do? Should we oblong them holes out? What do you guys think? Maybe just work them out a little bit. I do show the coil where they're coming around this way. That looks pretty good. The coils, coil wire is on. It's not touching anything hot. So I think what we'll do is maybe we'll can we flatten those? Probably not. These actually have threads in them. They look like six millimeter. So. I'd like to keep it down low like that. What if we just drill two new holes in it? That one kind of catches. That one doesn't. How are we going to do this? Should we should we take a piece and put on here that maybe bridges the two? What do you think about that plan? Um, maybe. Maybe not. I'm not really sure. Let's see. Cover that up again. Yeah, because we want to keep it low, keep it down in that saddle. So I mean I think we just drill another hole in it. I mean it's kind of wedged right in there between the frame rail and everything. I think that'll work. We'll just drill a hole about right there and call it good. So let's set that up and do that. Drill happens to be right here so let's try it. Which drill bit do you think is the dullest? I'll try this one I guess smaller so I'm thinking just put a hole right about there sorry I know I'm blocking Ooh. might have to punch it now that's funny we're not moving anything it's not working what do you think about this one? Does that one look good to you? You guys see that? No? No. We're going to try it. Is it spinning the right way, guys? Or is this like made out of like spring steel or something? Oh, I did see some, I see some stuff. Am I getting anything in anything? Yeah, let's put a rag over this just in case. I don't want to be getting anything in that carb. drill bit got through it. Which one do you think we should go with this one? Try it. Okay. okay. So, 
we got a little hole in there. Let's see if we can find a short enough bolt to put in it. Let's find the coil. Get all these shavings out of here. Let's see if we have a bolt. Well, guess what? Let's see if we can find a 10 millimeter nut in the collection here. There's another set of points. Hmm. Oh, I got one of these little cap nuts. That's kind of fancy. I think that'll fit. Or is it a little too fancy? It's, uh, it's in there. The only thing I don't like is this is kind of going to try to touch a little bit as soon as I squeeze on it a little more. It's almost touching. But it's tight enough. It ain't going anywhere. So I guess I guess we'll go with that plan. I like the way the coil I like the way the coil wire goes on. I like the way this wire comes up out of the base here. And that'll actually connect to either one, whichever one it is that I need. Actually, they're both the same. I never really noticed that. We have one wire coming out, so it doesn't really matter. So this one actually can go right in here. And we'll send the longer one. Here's the Here's the wires for the um, for the kill switch, and we'll fish them somewhere, probably down through here. Let's see, is that gonna? Yeah, that shouldn't affect it. So we're gonna have to get a wire to go between here and here with a couple ends on it. That shouldn't be no big deal. Should be able to find those somewhere. Um, let's see here. What do you think we should do next? Should we pull that cover off and take a look at the points? These are all Chinese parts, by the way. Um, don't know. That's why I said like the coil. You know, I think I paid nothing for it, like five bucks. I don't know. Maybe it might have come with this kit. Um, I think it came with a spark plug too, because I robbed the spark plug to put in the uh, in the XL bike. So. Um, yeah, I think the whole kit was 20 bucks with the points and everything. Chinese knockoff. So let's see what we can do. I think I'll set you guys down a little bit lower so we can look on this cover. I guess it wasn't that tight. I guess I'm weak. That must be it. I must be weak, guys. Okay. Ooh, she's pretty. Plug it in. Ground it. What do we need? We need to ground on that coil now because it's grounded to the frame. That's grounded there. The wire's plugged in. We'll kick it over and we'll get all kinds of spark, won't we? Nothing. Here, let's hang on to it. Nothing. So, as I suspected, we have nothing. 17, and it's a six point. Nice. Even better. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, it wants to spin. Do you guys know the trick to stop a cylinder from spinning? I'll show you. Let's see if we can find a piece of rope. Sorry, I got a cut in front of you. Okay, if you guys don't know the trick, you take a piece of, uh, this happens to be some uh, nylon, quarter inch rope. You can use whatever kind of rope you got, but make sure it's not too rotted, because if you lose it in the cylinder, you're going to cry. So, actually if you take a lighter, and this stuff is a little tough because i got to fish it down that hole. Well, I still haven't found anything to melt it with, 
So we're just going to try to jam this down the hole, which is not going to be easy. So they got hairs everywhere. And then get enough of it in there that you'll be able to pinch up the cylinder. I think we'll be okay with that. Got quite a bit shoved in there. It's still going in, so there it stopped. Now we should be able to jam up the cylinder here. She'll go around until it catches on it. There you go. See how that works? Pretty simple, eh? Okay, now, guys, it's well worth it to buy one of these. This is a flywheel puller for a Honda. They're like, I don't know what I paid for it, 10 bucks. It's a lot better than cracking the case. I've got one sitting right here. Oh yeah, here, I can show it right to you. This is what happens when you don't have the right tool. Can you guys see that? There it is. That's what happens. When somebody tried to pull the flywheel off this motor, they cracked it by jamming a screwdriver in there. And uh, this side does not have oil. It doesn't run in oil. So you could just, you know, uh, plug it up with some JB Weld. But, you know, you don't really want to screw up your, your cases. So I believe, let's see which way this threads in. Actually, I think it will thread in better if this is out of the way. There we go. Does it go the right way or the wrong way? Feels like it's got to go the wrong way. I thought I had to go the wrong way. I had reverse threads in it, but maybe not. Okay, I can't get it to thread in there. I know it will. I bet that's because it's got to go backwards. Let's try it this way. Yep. Left-handed thread, guys. Kind of thought that. But. So you, you thread the big piece in. You tighten in the center. Take your ratchet, which might even fit. It does. Kind of cool. Give it a little pull. And it pops right off. See it? All nice and loose. We'll pull that right out of there. So now... We're down into this thing. Get down on your level. Let's see here. Move this over. Okay. So, what we have here is our set of points. We have a uh, coil. And then we have this over here, which just is an open bar. See, these bikes were designed to be like an XL where you would have a lighting coil on them. So you can have either, either way, and they've basically left this bar in here, which does have a wire on it, which is kind of weird. Must be a grounding wire of some sort to uh, create, the, uh, um, create the spark. So this coil up here is your main coil. I don't believe I bought a new stator coil. For some reason, I thought I bought a new stator coil for it, but maybe I didn't. So hopefully, the stator will be okay, and we'll be able to uh, just go with with cleaning up the points here, replacing the points, and going from there. Actually, here I throw a little light on it. Does that help? Oh yeah, it helps quite a bit. Now now we can kind of see what's going on. But, yeah, I'm just checking out all the wires. This one wire seems to be almost touching, which that's a bad thing. That would short her out. So, it looks like it, looks like something going on here. I don't like that. I got it off, but yeah, I don't think it had rubbed through. So I don't think that was grounding it out. So one wire going out, 
That one looks like a other wire going that way. The other thing you should check when you have these apart, guys, is your uh, where are we? Um, your advance in this. Okay, you see those little springs? You guys see those? There's two of them in here. You want to make sure that these are springing because yeah, that one sounds good. That one sounds good. And the other thing you can do is just reach in here and grab. I know I don't have enough hands holding the flashlight, but uh, you can reach in here and grab this and advance it. And make sure that it's, if you guys can hear that, it is doing what it's supposed to do. So that's working. Um, let's get this thing apart. Pull these points out of it and uh, get the wires wrapped around. Get the, let's check that. Make sure these points are even kind of close to being right. So who knows? Okay, guys, let's get into this, tear this sucker apart. The points and condenser look marginally different. <laughs> So we'll have to be creative probably, just like we were with the coil, to uh, get this to work. So I guess that's the deal when you work on a 44-year-old bike. Things sometimes are a little different. So get those screws out of there. We'll have to get the soldering iron out and get those apart. This does have the little, actually, actually no, they look good. That condenser looks, it has the, the same height. You guys see that? We've got the same diameter. So that condenser looks good. Um, the points, I can get them out of here. We'll have to adjust the points with the um, flywheel on it. So that's a pain in the butt. I'm not sure if I'll be able to show you guys any of that because it is super, super tiny to fit in that hole. But we'll get this wire off this condenser. Use the old vice grips here. These are the Harbor Freight vice grips. My good little vice grips have come up missing. So we'll have to those. Okay, that's out. Let's see, does this one have a nut on it? It does. So we don't have to recycle that. We will need to loosen it up though. That's insulated, so that'll go on that side of it. Let me just get a light in here and look at this wire because I didn't like the way it looks but it is okay that's what it is right here this is tied on with like a little uh, little piece of wire they tied the wire to this um, non-existent coil um, just a dead coil or I don't know what you call it maybe it's for balance no it doesn't spin so not really sure what it would do there why you would even need it but they put them in there so we'll keep them in there um, I thought I had another coil for this I'm gonna have to look through my stuff because I swear I do um, I was gonna I figured the stator would be bad but but anyway let's change these points and condensers and see what happened condenser a lot of times some you know will will poop out on you Okay, as you guys know, I may not be the most organized person in the world, but to be honest with you, I actually do have all my electrical stuff kind of in one spot. So, uh, just kind of an offshoot. This is a Harbor Freight uh, box. I don't know what I paid for it. Probably a little or nothing. If you guys look in here. I have my test lights in here. My soldering gun. My soldering iron. I've got some flux in there. I got some heavy core. Oh, got some glass fuses that I didn't know were in there. They don't belong in there. Down below here, I have 
a multimeter, that's the fluke, and a Harbor Freight Jobby. So we've got, uh, that's a fluke 73, I think. You guys want to see that? We were, Harvey was just talking meters. So what is that? So, yep. Fluke multimeter, that's my good one. I then have in here miscellaneous connectors, you know, butt connectors, all kinds of squirrely stuff. Um, some plug right there, there's the ones I think we're going to use to make up a wire and um, to make that a little bit longer. Oh, I do have some black wire, I got some red wire. And I brought down some more wire just in case. So if I didn't have enough. So I guess we got wire. Okay guys. Well, we got the old soldering iron out here. Soldering gun. We're going to let this warm up for a second. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to take, take those wires off. So... I need a new tip for this. This is an actually, this is a, a real, this is a Weller. This gun's probably older than I am. But the last time I used it, it worked like a charm. So I think I picked it up at a yard sale for five bucks, maybe. So, and it even has the cool little light, see? And it still works. So, is it getting hot? Oh yeah. Hot enough to burn my finger. I guess that's a good thing. So the solder they used on this thing is probably uh, pretty good stuff. I would assume. But yeah, I'm not really sure what the third wire on here is for. You got one wire that goes to the points. You got one wire that goes up to the coil into the kill. It's a pretty simple ignition system. So what the third wire is for that's running back behind here and it's touching this which would be a ground which I think would be a bad idea. Um, I don't think you'd want this grounded. So, Oh there we go. Now we're, now we're melting some stuff. What they've done is they've got the there's a little clip on this and it's actually soldered they soldered the clip right into it, so this will be challenging to try to loosen up the solder enough and to get the wires out and then maybe pull that clip out of the way. Oh, I got the clip out, wedged it out with the solder iron, but man, it is on there. There she goes. It's out. So. Let's take a look at these. Yeah, see? You guys see that? Three wires. Look at that tiny one. Oh, it's going to the coil. That's where it's coming from. That, I guess we would need that wire then, wouldn't we? Because we need the wire from the coil to give the power. And then, so I guess I was having a dumb moment there, but I am not an electrician. So I didn't even play one on TV, so I have no clue when it comes to this stuff, but we make believe we do. So let's get this jammed in here. Actually, I guess I'm going to have to use the rubber off this one, the scrubber, rubber scrubber here, if I can get it out. put this scrubber on this one. Not sure which way. We'll put it on there that way and then decide we did it wrong, which I think I already did. Well, actually, let me see. That's got to go. Yeah, that's the hole right there. That's where it's got to get screwed on to. I'm going to put it on the opposite side. Is that a problem? Do we, Houston, do we have a problem? No, it's the exact same thing. So it should work. Why can't I figure this out? Am I having a mental moment? Probably. 
probably. My head in the way? We'll slap it. Tell me to get out of there. Oh yeah, no, that looks good. That looks right. Even though this is at a weird angle, that's probably what's messing me up. I think I'm going to put that screw in it to hold it in there before I try soldering those in. I didn't go crazy tightening it in, but I think we should be able to slide that wire in. We should be able to slide this wire in. I know you guys probably can't see anything I'm doing in here, but what I'm trying to do is these little clips kind of hold the wire in there long enough for me to maybe drop some solder in. So, I like this little wire here to be kind of tucked in between them. So it has a nice little happy place to live. Boy, do I need new glasses. Holy moly. I tell you what, I can't see nothing anymore. Maybe a little light will help. There. Let's try it. Look at this, I got some solder laying right here. Is it any good? It doesn't have a name on it, so it's got to be good. Now what you're trying to do is get down below here. This is what I'm trying to do. Get some heat in this thing. So we don't get a bad solder joint. I didn't like I just saw that whole tip move. That was pretty scary. Not a big fan of that. I don't want the end of these solder. She's hot, but she ain't hot up in there. Bent my tip, pushing. Well, we got a big goober on there. Try to get that burned off. Let's look and see what kind of mess we made. Actually, that's not too bad. Not bad for not being able to see what I was doing. Make sure that those are on there. They seem to be contacting pretty well. Let's see if we can push this up out of the way a little bit. Of course, it's magnetic. Throwing metal chunks in here, which is nice. So, yeah, I swear I got another coil here somewhere. I got to go on a search and find it because I'd really like to change that coil. I know I got one, but I don't know where it is. Okay, guys. Um, I'm still looking for the. Uh, 
stator coil that I'm pretty sure I got floating around, but maybe I don't. Maybe I didn't buy one. I got an extra old one off one of the other bikes. So I think it came off the, the bike motor I bought off from eBay. So it's not a little tiny nut. So, not sure if that's what side of it it goes on, but that's how I did it. Oh, nice. Oh, no, wait a second. Okay, wait a second, guys. Wait a second. This has got to go over here. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get that all the way over there? I'm not sure. Maybe I need to spin this wire around. Maybe if we put it on this side. that so let's get this screw put in here and then we can try to get the screw put in it we'll try to adjust the timing when we get the flywheel back on it don't want it too tight and uh, we'll jam it right out of the way right now so it goes on easier and then uh, that'll give us more room to slide the flywheel back in. All the magnets are good, everything's sticking to it. So let's try to sweep some of the shavings that were laying here. Like I said, that seems all good. We'll take this out. What the hell was that? Been a washer? Yeah, must have been. We'll find it when we get that far. Okay, let's get the rope out of the cylinder so we can actually turn it. Get our flashlight. What'd you guys do with the flashlight? go. Interesting. Huh. I just had it here. Thought I did. Hmm. Sometimes you don't know what you're doing. Well, we gotta find that because we can't see in that hole. Aha! Success. So, where I'm trying to get you guys, ooh, the camera's loose. Don't get dizzy. Where I'm trying to get you guys is right in there. You can see the connector where the wire goes on. What we'll do is we'll loosen it up. That'll let it spring up against it. We'll try to bring it around to top dead center. And we'll see if we can time it from there. I believe we just have to bring the timing mark up. There should be a mark on this. Might be that casting mark, but it might actually be right there. Not sure. We'll have to get the book out. This here is the uh, shop manual, XR75 shop manual. Give me out a little bit. There you go. And uh, it's an original manual, but it's a photocopy. It came with the bike when I got it. So right here, it tells how to adjust your points. So basically here it says, uh, let's see here. 
Remove the generator cover. Well, I removed the whole thing. Turn the generator rotor clockwise until the mark F on the rotor is aligned with the index mark. So where is the index mark? There's a little thing of a duty up here. Is this it? So where is the index mark? Contact breaker points two. Three is the index mark. Yeah, I'm still still looking here for this index mark. I mean, that does kind of look like a little pointer right there. So I'm not sure if that's the mark or not. Weird. It's usually cast right into the cover up here somewhere. And if you took the cover off, you wouldn't be able to see it. I wonder if I need to put the cover back on. I bet that's the problem. I bet I need the cover to find the mark. We'll take the cover off this. Holy moly, that's tight. Get this one out. Man. That one's brutal. Okay. Let's see if this has the mark. Yes, it does. Actually, that almost kind of lines up with that mark that I was looking at. I wonder if they are the same. They may be. See, guys, you're learning this just right along with me, you know? Let's move you up so you can actually see. I don't know why this thing is not moving. There it goes. There. So, what I'm doing here now is I'm putting the cover back on because the mark is right there. So, that's where that's got to be. Okay, got a little flashlight in here again, so you guys can see now maybe that the mark is right here. The F is going to be right there, and now we have to see what the points are doing, which they shouldn't be doing anything because, well, they've been loosened up. Okay, so now... Let's see what the book says to set the babies at. Let's see here. The book says, uh, is aligned with the index mark. If the contact breaker parts start opening under such a condition, the ignition timing is correct. This adjustment may be made accurately by using a timing tester. To adjust the point gap, loosen the contact breaker, loosen and crew, and move the point base. Inserting the point gap, increasing the point gap will advance the ignition timing and vice versa. After adjusting, locking the screw, recheck the ignition timing. After adjusting the ignition timing, see if the point gap is between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 millimeters. Or wait, point, I, I can't read guys. Okay, it's between 0.3 and 0.4 millimeters or 12 thousandths to 16 thousandths. There's our, there's our answer. Now, so we get the old, uh, Feeler gauges out here. I need a headlamp. That's what I need. I think I got one out in the garage. There's a 16 thousandths brass. Should we set it at 16 or should we like split the difference and go like 14? There's a 12. There's a 14. So I guess we'll split the difference and go with a 14 if I can get that in there. Um, I don't know if brass is any better than any other thing, but, okay, I'm going to need six hands here, guys. This is, man, okay, I'm going to go get, i got a headlamp somewhere, i got a brand new one. Where's my brand new headlamp? 
Have you guys seen it? Okay guys, I found my headlamp and I was able to uh, adjust the points. I would have took you guys in there to see that, but it was just too tight. And uh, you need four hands to try to hold the feeler gauge, the screwdriver, and another screwdriver to try to crank them down. So um, I think I got them set pretty darn close. Like I said, I've got the wire hooked up, I think, pretty well to this wire. So let's make sure we can get a good connection there. Make sure that's not touching. Uh, I have a feeling I got a bad stator. But you never know. Maybe we'll get a little click click out of it. A little sparky. So come on. Let's go take a look and see what we get. So we'll bring you over. I think I'm going to try to set you up if I can. Pretty darn close. See if I can get you. Maybe right about there. I think I got you pretty close. Spark plug, we need one of those. Oh, we got one in here. This plug doesn't look too bad. So, let me shut the light off. Seeing anything, guys? I'm not seeing anything. Ow. Nothing. Could it be the plug? I suppose it could be. But I highly doubt it. I know the ends, but this is a brand... Is this a brand new end, or is this an end that I jammed on here? Looks kind of crappy. I'm going to do the old hot trick here. I got nothing. So, we've changed the points, we've soldered on a new condenser, and we still don't have any spark. So, what do you guys think? Stator, right? That's what I'm thinking too. Uh, I have another stator. Got a whole other stator plate. But, let me zoom you out here. This is what I got. Um, God only knows if that's any better. It looks pretty yucky there. Where it's kind of pulled apart. The rubbing, the coating is off. See, what happens to these, I've been told, is that you can see this coppery color on here. That's actually an insulator. And what happens over time is the coil will, uh, that coating will break down and more and more wires will touch. Um, which, in fact, what it basically does is it turns your, your coil into just a chunk of copper and the electricity just goes shooting right straight through. Which, that's not what we want it to do. We want it to go in there and we want it to build up so it actually creates a spark. Um, so, looks like I'm ordering a stator for it too now, which kind of kills me because I thought I ordered one already, but I guess I didn't. So, anyway guys, I think we're going to leave it right here for today, and uh, since things aren't working, and uh, we'll have to get on the old computer and find a stator for it. Thanks for watching and commenting and subscribing and I uh, really appreciate you guys uh, all hanging along on this project and uh, you know letting me know some of your ideas and thoughts and uh, it's been pretty useful. So uh, thanks again. Bye.